I'd like to start by first addressing the fact that there are simply too many definitions of leadership out there. Part of the reason I've found it necessary to make this video is because of the myriad ways in which I've seen the term leadership coined and defined, only to be redefined over and over. And that right there is the reason, however, that I think that this term is so easily confused. We've tried to define it so many times that no one has any clear idea of what a leader is, what they do, or how to recognize one properly. Leadership is behavior. It's not numbers in an Excel spreadsheet or how many people report to you or your title, your pay, or your resume. Leadership never was someone telling someone else what to do or someone else making the rules that everyone else has to follow. Leadership isn't about winning or losing, but about evolving. Kuzis and Posner wrote the book The Truth About Leadership to illustrate the 10 fundamental truths that they have learned over the 20 years of in-depth research on leadership and leaders themselves. It's hard to say there's any specific end-all book on leadership, but this one comes pretty close. In their book, the authors cover a range of behaviors that make up the individual behaviors of a leader. What this means is that a leader is not identified by their traits, such as charisma, but by their behavior, such as charity or thoughtfulness. Becoming a leader isn't like taking a test. The part about defining leadership that makes it so difficult is that it's defined by the promotions and recognitions that people receive. When someone is promoted to a leadership position, the organization is sending the message that says, here, this is what we think a leader looks like. So most of us have to think back to past bosses to drum up a leader from our personal lives. And unfortunately, people don't always get promoted for the best of reasons. And even if they were, who's to say that their version of leadership is an accurate one? The truth is, most of us just don't really have a clear picture of what a leader looks like. So if we can't count on our own interpretation of the leadership, where can we turn? There is a glut of information on leadership and the ways in which leaders affect our lives available through numerous books such as the one I just mentioned. Um, and I'll put some more down in the description below. Uh, and like most things that are offered for free with the promise of huge returns, leadership doesn't work that way. To learn about leadership is to become a scholar of it. No one reads one book and rolls out of the bed the next morning and feels like a leader all of a sudden. Well, except for narcissists. The point is that leaders are leaders because they took it upon themselves to see a weakness and to improve it. Leaders are made in a moment. Around the early part of the 20th century, a consultant named Frederick Taylor emerged as the preeminent authority on management and what he considered to be scientific management, or management by the numbers. Now, if Kuzis and Posner wrote the book on leadership, then at the time, Frederick Taylor wrote the book on management at the beginning of the 20th century. And it was so bad. The book basically calls workers idiots and spells out over around 100 pages the process of managing such lumbering Neanderthals. And these aren't all my words, these are actually Frederick Taylor's. And I'm not kidding. I think everyone should read this book just to understand where we're coming from as the United States, because back then, everyone who was anyone read this book. Frederick Taylor became known as the authority on how to manage people, and his ideas were foundational to how our work systems were structured through the last 100 years. And it goes a long way to explain where so many weak leaders and bad managers came from. Prior to Frederick Taylor's principles of scientific management, how work was done was left largely up to the workers to figure out, with management left to run the business and ensure all of the necessary processes were carried out. A leader was one whom emerged from the masses to help organize the labor and create a united front with management. Frederick Taylor took that away from the working man by putting management so closely over the worker that they weren't allowed to so much as take extra steps without justification. This is subtly different from how companies like Toyota encourage their employees to become more efficient as part of their everyday job. Frederick Taylor would tell you that the worker is too stupid to know any better and must be led by one who is smarter and better bred than they are. Leadership is a nebulous concept. The part that makes it hard to define is that people have been trying to define it for too long. There are just too many definitions out there. This leads us to identify a leader by their behavior, not their traits, and to seek out credible sources whenever possible. Knowing those traits, we can begin to identify within ourselves what we need to improve. And finally, in order to learn how to improve the future, we need to learn from the mistakes of the past.